uh, when I came out of uh, grad school, I did a postdoc in Tallahassee at the Florida State University, and I came from a very shielded environment where basically everything was given to you. And then I started postdocing for Zach Fisk in Tallahassee, and he basically went, there's the lab, go ahead. So it was very nice to have Goncourt around, which was sort of the elder statesman of the floor, which uh, kept an eye uh, on the students and postdocs that they were doing uh, two silly things. So that's uh, basically where I met him. And uh, he has gone uh, far from Tallahassee. I mean, he switched once, yes. He went to Kentucky first. Yes, yes. And then, uh, <clears throat> then uh, to Boulder and uh, Basically, if you work in the correlated oxides, uh, one of the big classes is ruthenates and now iridates, and then the, the man to talk to is usually Gong Kao. So I guess he will give us a nice overview today of uh, what he's doing these days. So I give you the floor or the screen. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Thank you for the uh, invitation. Uh, so yes, this, this work today uh, that I'm going to talk about uh, was started in Tallahassee 20 some years ago when Andre and, uh, and I were there. Um, the motivation at the time uh, to pursue this type of materials, materials that uh, Andre just said, uh, ruthenates, iridates, and other 4D and 5D transition metal oxides. The motivation for that, because uh, remember that is uh, during the heyday of uh, superconducting cuprates. So we are, we are trying to looking for superconductivities beyond cuprates. So we started this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, search for superconductivity in different materials. And of course, of course, 20 some years have gone by, uh, there's no sign of superconductivities uh, in, in, uh, in these materials, especially iridates. That's something that I'm gonna talk about today. But then we do have learned a few things about, the, uh, about this, the, this class of materials. So today I'm gonna share some of these with you. The, this figure here um, uh, is, is actually is, the, uh, is, the, uh, uh, is a book cover uh, is to be published soon by Oxford. Um, it, has a, it has this uh, distorted crystal structure. And uh, it also has this two dots that represents spin orbit interactions. I think these are the, actually the two important elements uh, that actually drive physics in this type of uh, materials, materials that I'm uh, I mean, iridates and uh, ruthenates and, and the other uh, uh, spin orbit uh, coupled oxides. Let's see. How come it's not moving? What? It's not moving. Okay. Um, so the, here is the uh, the uh, the outline of, of the talk. So I, I like to since uh, Andrew gave me a, a couple of warning, uh, saying that uh, I, I should give uh, uh, more uh, the focus on more uh, uh, general review uh, rather than just talk about the, he says hot stuff. So I'm going to spend some time. Uh, going over uh, the uh, the this uh, the the background. So in other words, I'm going to start it with the quantum induction, uh, and then then we will focus then uh, uh, spin orbit in actions, and then uh, the the um, the focus of of course is, is the materials uh, that are driven by a combined effect of uh, of Coulomb and the spin orbit in actions. So then, uh, if I have still have some time left, I, I'm going to. Uh, talk about uh, one of the recent uh, results um, uh, that, uh, that uh, developed out of our group, that is uh, using electric current to control structures and the physical properties uh, of certain type of materials, including iridates and, and ruthenates and other uh, uh, materials. So I will finish my, uh, my, my talk with, uh, with a couple of lines of, uh, uh, of uh, outlook. I hope this, yeah, oops. So the, this, uh, the field of strongly correlated electrons actually started in the 30s. That's something that we all know well. And then, uh, so in one of, this is the, one of the paper that was published uh, the, uh, in the, uh, during the symposium 
uh, that was held in 1937. So Verve and, and, and the company raises a question at the time, why binary 3D oxides, for instance, nickel oxides um, are insulated? Because this is uh, actually, the observations are inconsistent with the, uh, the, at the time, the conventional wisdom. Uh, that is, the, uh, for materials with the incomplete uh, D shell, uh, the uh, materials should be, uh, should be metallic, but why they are insulated. And so at the same symposium and the, uh, and Mod and the, and, and the company proposed for the first time that uh, maybe the, uh, the free electron models actually is not working here uh, properly. So, so he, I highlighted it here. So it is quite, so the mod pointed out, it is quite possible that the electrostatic interaction between, uh, between electrons prevents them from moving at all. So I think this is the, actually is the beginning of the strongly correlated electron, uh, 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 the, uh, yeah, the field of the started in this, during this time. And, um, So of course, this is a really a time honored and a challenging field. And uh, since the uh, late thirties and now, there are so many theoretical efforts or experimental efforts to trying to better understand this class of materials where that the electron electron uh, uh, correlations does, uh, is the driving force. So we, we, we know so well that the, uh, in the fifties, there is later, uh, the, uh, the models uh, that's trying to explain all this insulating state uh, you know, using this, uh, 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 well, they attribute the insulating states to, to magnetic ordering or unit cell doubling. And, uh, and of course, in the 60s, there is a Hubble model. And then this is the model that's now is more widely accepted. And then in this model, there are two basic parameters or uh, quantities. One is kinetic energy or bandwidth, W, the other is potential energy or Coulomb interaction, that is U, U. So the physical properties of these correlated electron systems, depending on the ratio of these two quantities. So um, this is, a, this is a, actually a slide by Kalia. Uh, it's actually is a, it's from the, one of his paper published in Physics Today. So this is the, uh, the, uh, this is the picture here. So if Coulomb interaction, if the, uh, uh, the kinetic energy or bandwidth is much larger than quantum interaction, then we have this uh, metallic situation, for instance, copper, right? So the ground state is very stable. So no matter what you do, you apply pressure, you, uh, you increase temperature, whatever you do, the ground state is very stable, okay? Uh, and then the other extreme situation is where, is where that the quantum interaction is much stronger than bandwidth, for, for instance, this. Uh, so in this case, again, the insulating state is also very stable. It is not sensitive to any uh, external stimuli at all. But it is, a, it is a, the materials that are having this, uh, the comparable column or U and the W, that actually is interesting. That is the, are the materials that we call it the correlated electron systems. So these type of materials, the uh, bear this dual features. So that is the uh, metallic feature, which is this peak, the density of state is high near Fermi surface, or you have these two peaks. That is a, that is a sign of uh, insulating states. So it really depends on the environment, depends on the external stimuli, then and the the uh, uh, so these uh, these uh, ground states uh, uh, they can be uh, metallic or can be insulating. And then so this we think is the beauty of this class of materials. Um, of course, there are many, many examples. So there, there uh, of this type of materials. Uh, of, uh, uh, so for, for instance, mod Hubble transition, the, uh, these, uh, this type of transition very often happens uh, in the transition metal oxides and the condo effect. And uh, in the, so that is induction between magnetic moments and the conduction electrons in dilute alloys. And the causal magnetic resistance, uh, so that the, uh, so that means that nonlinear response or giant response to small magnetic field, um, and then so on and so forth. Of course, the most famous one is the one that's this uh, high TC. This is uh, this is uh, 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 discovered in 1986. So that causes a sea change in this in this community, and then so the so 
the um, so what happens then is that the the uh, Mueller and the, and the bad noise is trying to study the ferro ferroelectric materials. So they doped barium to in the in lanthanum to copper oxide materials, but then discovered that the uh, actually resistivity is going down, and uh, and the TC actually is quite high, is so high that is inconsistent with the uh, BCS theory because based uh, based on BCS theory, the superconductivity is driven by uh, the uh, the lattice electron lattice coupling, so therefore uh, the uh, the TC cannot be higher than thirty degree. Otherwise, the structure may not be stabilized. But then here uh, in the cool place, the TC is higher is uh, is higher than thirty Kelvin. Of course, later on, the TC could go as high as one hundred sixty uh, Kelvin. So this is all. This is driven by the uh, ultimately is driven by spin orbit, uh, by, is uh, by correlation or or electron electron correlation, and actually the the mechanism that drives this super high TC superconductivity is still remains a profound intellectual challenge uh, in in the in the field. So this is uh, in eighties, and of course this type of research is still going on. Um, one thing that I want to point out, so this is the paper that is published in the very low profile, we call it low profile journals. So the impact index is one point, so only 1.7 and this journal actually does not actually exist anymore. Um, so I, I, I just find it very ironic. So I mean, nowadays we're always pursuing this so-called high profile uh, journals to publish papers. Uh, so this of course is a, just a, is a, is a counter, counter examples. So really it is about the content of the work that matters. Okay, um, in a, in a, in uh, entering this century, uh, the there's there's a rediscoveries of spin orbit interactions, and the, the most famous one uh, is the is the paper by by Kane and uh, Mali uh, that proposes the quantum uh, quantum spin Hall effect uh, driven by spin orbit interactions, and then this proposal was confirmed two years later. Um, uh, so the rest of, uh, of course, is history. So nowadays, topological states, the topological materials are the, one of the most current and, uh, and the interesting topics uh, in this community. But now all these materials are actually driven by the, in this topological states and topological materials, the driving force is the spin orbit inductions. Correlation actually is not that important. So now I'm gonna turn to a group of materials um, that are uh, that actually having both both the uh, the quantum interactions and the spin orbit uh, couplings, uh, spin orbit interactions. I would say. So this is the famous diagram uh, uh, generated by your own faculty, uh, William. Um, so this diagram certainly you can see that the, this carries uh, the very rich uh, the uh, phase diagram. So what are we are interested. Are the are the are the are this are the materials where both correlation and the spin orbit interactions are important or comparable? So this is the area that we focus. Okay, so um, so if we turn to a periodical table, and then as we said, I uh, I am sure this is a, this is something that we all know well that spin orbit coupling is proportional to uh, to uh, atomic number. So in other words. The heavier the elements, the stronger the spin will be in actions. So if you look at the periodical table here, that the, uh, the certainly 5D electrons, uh, uh, the transition metals, the having largest, uh, have large, largest spin orbit interactions because the Z number is larger. And, uh, and at, at the same time, the quantum interaction for 4D, for 4Ds, or especially for 5Ds, are, are, are uh, is, is reducing because the orbital is more extended. So therefore, quantum interaction becomes weaker. So you have this trend. So when you're going down from, from 3D, 4D, and the 5Ds, the, uh, the spin orbital coupling is increasing uh, because of the Z number is increasing. But then at the same time, quantum interaction becomes weaker, okay? Because of extended orbitals uh, of, these material, of these elements. So this is something that we all know well. So then if we put the, the numbers together and then, and then make a comparison between them, we can see that the, for instance, that the spin orbit interactions. So for, um, for copper, 
the, uh, the uh, atomic number is 29, whereas for uranium is 77. Okay, so you can see, uh, you can see that the, for 5Ds, the spin orbit coupling is this much, okay? It's, uh, it's up to one electron volt. Whereas, uh, whereas for 3D transition uh, metals, because of the smaller Z number, so this number, the, uh, this uh, spin orbit interaction is actually is, uh, one order or even two orders of magnitude smaller compared to that uh, of 5D uh, electron transition metals. So if we also look at the, uh, the coulomb interaction because of the extended orbitals, so you can see that the, uh, for 5Ds, the coulomb interaction is largely reduced compared to 3Ds, 3Ds 5 to 7 electron volts, roughly. Whereas for, for 5Ds, it's comparable, it's very much comparable to spin orbit interactions, okay? Um, so, this, so this is something that we will see. So the, in, in 5Ds, even in some, time, in some cases in 4D transition metal oxides, the driving force is no longer either Coulomb interactions or spin orbit couplings, but they're rather a combined effect of both. Okay, so that makes the situation uh, complicated and certainly more interesting. Well, equally interesting, I would say. Um, and of course, because the Coulomb interaction uh, is, uh, is uh, reducing, so, so the Holmes rule coupling becomes weaker as we move from 3D, 4 to 4D, and, and 5D. So, so these are, the, these are the, a few numbers uh, that, that, that for us to see. So we can see in this situation for 5D, for 5D transition metal oxides, there is no, there is no one single dominant force, okay, but rather is a combined effect of a few things. So the, I'm just, this is pretty much the same thing. I'm putting that in a, in a, in a table so you can see. So this is the quantum interaction and uh, for 3D, 5, 4D and 5Ds and this is spin orbit interactions. So my point here is that for 5Ds, all these energies are comparable, all right? Um, and even for 4Ds, as we will see, that even Coulomb interaction is still much, is uh, stronger than spin orbit uh, coupling by uh, all interactions, but then spin orbit interactions actually plays, uh, yeah, in some cases, plays very critical role there as well. But of course, for 3Ds, as you can see, that spin orbit coupling is at best, is a small perturbation. So therefore, there, it is justifiably uh, ignored in when we discuss 3D transition metal oxides, for instance, cuprates. Um, so then the point here is that the, uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, new balance uh, between the relevant energy, yeah, it's this new balance between relevant energy that drives new physics, okay? This is new physics that to this day, we still don't understand well. Um, so I let me give you a couple of examples and then we, uh, then we will focus on a few specific things. So this is uh, uh, the uh, Ruthenates. And again, this, is, uh, this work is started in Tallahassee. Um, so we have uh, this, um, uh, this uh, yeah, rot stem proper series. So in other words, they're all prop sky related uh, like structure. So N represents the unit, the number of unit cell in, uh, the represents number of ruthenium, ruthenium layer in the unit cell. So uh, this, is, this, I'm sure that this is well known to many of us. So as we increase the number of, um, uh, of the ruthenium oxide in the unit cell, we can see that the ferromagnetic transition goes down and, uh, whoops, ferrite goes down and, uh, and uh, the, um, um, uh, this, is, uh, this is the trend. So, but then, so when the, when the number becomes N, the system becomes, um, you know, the, the ferromagnetic state or order uh, disappears and the uh, and, um, superconducting state, you know, 1.5 occurs. Uh, of course, the mechanism of this is still unknown. Uh, initially, uh, it was thought that this is a P wave superconductivity, but then certainly the recent paper indicating otherwise. So, but then the, uh, so, but then the, nevertheless, this is a very exotic super, superconducting state. And then I also want to point out for all this class, for all strontium ruthenium oxides, and that depend, yeah, no matter what the N number is, they're all metallic. But then if you, if you replace the strontium, okay, which is uh, two plus by calcium, 
And then in this case, in this re replacement, we did not add a, any electrons. So the only thing that we change is the size of the cation. Because the, ionic, the cal calcium is about 20% smaller than, than strontium. So as you can see, then therefore crystal structure is, a, is much more distorted. So because of this, this structural distortions, so we see completely different ground states. So for, for example, magnetic, magnetically, we tend to see, we see that this, the calcium ruthenium oxides tend to be antiferromagnetic. And certainly that the, for, in terms of the transport properties, these materials tend to be well, show metal insulated transition. Of course, that uh, if when n number becomes infinity, so in other words, when we have this uh, pure perovskite situation, the or calcium ruthenium O3, the uh, the ground state is metallic, but then it is really on the borderline uh, of becoming insulating state. So, so the, my point here is that in this type of materials, distortion, Crystal structure distortion plays a very, very important role there. So this is one of the examples. So I, I also want to point out here, for instance, for N equals one, which is calcium two, ruthenium O4, that is a sister compound of this superconducting compound, strontium two, ruthenium O4. So this is a is a antiferromagnetic. I'm sorry, that's this is antiferromagnetic. It's very insulating here, whereas the for calcium, for strontium, ruthenium 214, it is a superconducting uh, and it is certainly the, the ground state um, uh, is non magnetic. So um, that, that's the, one of the points that I like to make. Um, now let's turn to irradiates. dates. Okay, the irradiates. dates, uh, well, there are a few things. Uh, the, um, it, it is one of the nine least abundant elements in the, in the Earth's crust. Okay. Um, so this might be one of the reasons that it below, but before the uh, 90s, no, I actually studied them because uh, it's so rare and it's really, uh, uh, in terms of making materials, it, 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 it has some challenges there. But then these materials are interesting. Okay, so uh, uh, interesting in the sense that because of atomic number is high and, uh, uh, and that therefore spin wobbly coupling is so strong. And then in the, in the, in the transit, in the era days, uh, that, uh, there are two common, uh, oxidation states, one is a four plus, the other is five plus. If it is four plus, we'll have five D electrons, we'll have five uh, D electrons. If it is a four, five plus, we'll have four D electrons, okay? Both of these two ions are interesting, but then the efforts very often are focusing on, the, uh, on this uh, four plus, uh, in part is because as we will see that some of these compounds uh, uh, are similar to cuprates, so, once again, people are always um, uh, more interested in superconductivity, uh, superconductivities in materials. Okay, so um, we started this, and as Andrew knows, so we started this in 90s, and the time we are making strontium ruthenates, we are making strontium iridates, and so on and so forth. And uh, so these are the materials that we are making, and of course, we are making a lot more. So at the time, it was very surprising that why all these materials are insulating because the strong symmetry is strong. This is the few examples there. And then not only they are interested, they are insulating, but also they are magnetic ordered and ordered at relatively high temperatures. Because this again, these, all these observations are, are inconsistent with the conventional wisdom at a time that we understand because interactions between orbitals that provides bandwidth in the solid should follow this sequence. So in other words, 4D and then particularly 5D transition metal oxides should have a very large band. So therefore we should not expect a whole lot of magnetic order because correlation is weak. So we, we should not expect in um, insulating state in this type of materials. Because uh, we also at the time we studied ruthenates as we just mentioned that the, for the, all the counterparts of ruthenates are all metallic or even superconducting. So it was very possible for a long time and at a time, because we started this in the, in the early 90s. And then for, you know, for many reasons that we understand, because at the time the, uh, the, the community focus is on cuprates, is on, on the castle magneto resistance. So when you are asking people, so why this is so, people say most of you know, most transition metal access are insulated, so what's the big deal? So which, which was true, okay. So, um, 
So anyway, so did, did that didn't stop us. So we, are, we, we continue on. So in one of these uh, workshops that we held in Kentucky, at the University of Kentucky, uh, I met this, uh, the, um, this guy that you all know, he's an optical guy. Uh, I'm, I'm sure many of us know him. So he was at a time also interested in new materials and also the, uh, the eerie days. So we said that uh, why not you do some of these optical studies um, and see what happens. You know, first of all, we should know what is the energy gap of the system. Because uh, at the time, the, the way the experimental tools that we have is only magnetic and, and the transport and, and the thermal, uh, thermal uh, properties. So we cannot, we don't have any, any, any means to, to, to do the optical measurements. So he was happy to do that. And then of course he did a lot more. So this is actually the result of our, our uh, collaboration. So this is of course is well known figures now. Um, so uh, so what, what this happens is this, so this is a strontium 214. So based on the conventional understanding, so we should expect a broad band, okay? So uh, then therefore we should expect a metallic state, we should expect non-magnetic uh, ground states, but then certainly this is inconsistent with the observation, experimental observation. So we must have a band, uh, band gap. So if you want to generate the band gap based on the calculation without consideration of spin orbit interactions, then you have to assume that the quantum interaction is, uh, is about the 10 electron volts. And as we know, at the, uh, we, we said that this is not realistic because we know that the, the, the largest uh, quantum interaction in this type of materials uh, can no more, can, can um, just, is just, is just a couple of uh, uh, electro volts. So, so this is, so we're missing something. So then if you're considering the, uh, if you're considering spin orbit interactions, then this broad band is split into two pieces. And then, so this is this well known uh, state, we call it the J effective one half band and J effective three halves. So for the, because of the combination of a crystal field effect, and the spin orbit the, uh, uh, interaction, uh, the effect of spin orbit interactions. So we have this configuration. So three halves is lower and then one half is higher. So this piece of band, so then this of course is only considering uh, spin orbit interactions. So if you introduce again, spin orbit in, uh, the cooling interactions, uh, uh, then even cooling interactions is largely weakened or reduced, but then is still comparable to this narrowed bandwidth. So in other words, it's still uh, effective enough or strong enough to open uh, energy gap. So that's why we have this. So therefore, in this type of materials, the insulating state is a combination, it's a combined effect of both cooling interaction, uh, interaction and the spin orbit interactions. Okay, so that's, it's a, it's a new mod state. Okay. Um, so this is a, a, a few, de you know, some details. So well, as I mentioned earlier that, that we have two ions, uh, different uh, co common ions, uh, uh, the uh, uh, oxidation states. So if it is a five, if it is a, a four plus, then we have a five D electrons. And uh, the, um, this would be the distribution of this, uh, of this five electrons. Um, so this is a, this is a J, effect, uh, J effective one half state uh, bands that is half field. And then if it is a, uh, if it is a five plus, then we have four uh, electrons that occupies the lower states or, or J effective three half states. And then of course uh, this, um, you know, this it appears to be boring. And uh, if we uh, believe this is the, this was happened, then we should expect the J effective zero states. In other words, for all the materials having iridium five plus should have a should have a, uh, the uh, uh, single ground states. But then uh, the recent study also suggests that this is not exactly true. But then today's talk, today I will focus on this. Okay, focus on four plus, because this, because this is more uh, interesting. The compounds with this are well, apparently uh, probably more interesting. Um, the, um, so before I talk about any details, uh, let me share with you some of these uh, uh, empirical trends in irritates. So iridium, ir iridates tend to be magnetic insulator. This is something that we know now. So, and uh, so this is very striking, uh, as we said that, the, you know, for expen expen uh, extended bands for, in, for the quantum, in quantum interaction this low, we should not expect this. But then, you know, almost all iridates are magnetic insulator, magnetic insulator. 
And then there is a very unusual correlation or lack of correlation between, between magnetic and insulating states. We'll, we'll talk about that. And also, there's a, the, the, the system is that uh, there's no metallization. So in other words, high pressure cannot metallize irritates. Okay, so uh, the recent example is the strontium-214. So we apply the pressure up to 185 GPA, and then the system becomes remains insulated. So we call it the permanent or persistent insulator. So here is the example here. Uh, this paper was just published uh, in early this year. So this is resistivity and resistance, and then uh, this is the, the the temperature. So you can see that the uh, this is the this is lower pressure and uh, this is high pressure. So this red curve, this is too busy picture. So I highlight this uh, right cur curve. That is an uh, indication. That is the uh, resistance corresponding to 100, 185 GPA. So you can see that the resistance is still remains very high, 10 to 7 power. Uh, but then uh, you also notice that there is a saturation at low temperature, but that's a different story. But then the essence here is that uh, even at this high temperature, even the structure is uh, the crystal, uh, the unit cell is reduced, even the band is broadening, but then the, the, um, uh, the system is remaining insulating. So the, one of the things that we want to say is that this is another indication that the, the crystal structure distortion actually are more dominant than, than, the, than, than the situation in 3D transition metal oxides. The reason that the, these materials are more sensitive to, to structures is because of spin orbit coupling. Because the spin orbit couples the, uh, couples the, uh, the, uh, uh, the lattice to, to everything else. So therefore, when lattice changes, everything else changes. And also, the, uh, this is high pressure um, magnetic X-ray data that's also published early this year. So you can see that the, uh, when pressure is higher than 35 GPA, the, the, we don't have, we have paramagnetic states. And the paramagnetic states combine with the insulated states. So there is this uh, speculation that we may have this uh, novel quantum paramagnetic states. Okay. So this is just an example to show that the, there is a very unusual correlation between magnetic and insulating states and uh, the, the uh, and then this class of materials, uh, not only strontium two and four, but also the rest of iridates do not be, become metal or do not metallize at high pressure. But then on the other hand, the this system can be metallic easily if you dope chemical. If you if you dope the um, uh, yeah if you dope it with uh, with impurity, no matter on which side, either on the, on the A side or B sides the system becomes metallic. So, um, and yet, because uh, for instance, the uh, strontium compound is, uh, well, is probably more uh, well known than others for, for the reason this, this compound in terms of structure, in terms of magnetic uh, uh, properties are similar to lanthanum two uh, copper oxide four. So there is a, there is a, there is a, the, a number of, uh, of uh, theoretical work predicting that this, this material should be metallic. Uh, should be superconducting if you dope electrons properly. Uh, but then so far, there is no, supercon there is no sign of superconductivity. I mean, of course, there, there are some papers indicating, this, indicating that there is some hint of superconductivities. But then superconductivities, uh, some con conductivities by conventional definition is uh, a two, is that the zero resistance at low temperature and the dial magnetic response at, the, uh, at below Tc. So we don't see any of this. Um, so, and then, so then uh, this uh, superconductivity is just one of them. Actually, there, there is a whole bunch of other theoretical predictions and, and then and then most of them do not meet the, uh, uh, actually have met very limited experimental confirmation. Um, so th this again, I will, I, will address, I will address this again, that the, this again is because of the, this uh, super sensitivity of the uh, physical properties to the uh, structural distortions, okay. Um, so, um, we, uh, a couple of years ago, we, uh, and then, uh, and the, uh, Patrick Sean and I wrote a review article on, on iridates. So we, we actually tabulate the, uh, we have a, a table that actually, um, uh, highlights some of the input central issues of iridates. So for instance, for late the profs guys, the central issue is superconductivity. People are looking for superconductivity for, for in recent years. And then the other thing is that the, uh, uh, 
honeycomb lattices. And then, of course, the spin orbit, the spin uh, quantum spin liquids are, are actually is a very, a very interesting topic. And, um, and uh, of course, in the pyrochloride um, uh, iridates, uh, because of the strong spin orbit interactions, so there, there are proposals for various topological states and such. And then for double props guys, there, there, we, 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 one would assume, we, one would expect that uh, we should have a, we should have a j, uh, j equals zero state or single ground states because of, we only have a four uh, electrons. So actually none of this, uh, actually it's uh, either, uh, 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 are uh, either, none of this actually are experimentally uh, confirmed or, uh, uh, or verified. But the one thing that's clear that most iridates are insulating and magnetic, uh, and magnetic. Okay. So the reason, so this is a, the reason, as we said, is a is a extreme sensitivity of, of ground states to to uh, uh, crystal uh, structural distortion. So this is also an advantage too. So so there is a there is a strong magnetoelastic effects and then lattice driven properties there, and then and also as we will see just in a moment. The, 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 uh, because of the strong spin orbit coupling, so there's a strong interlocking between lattice and the magnetic moment. And then, so this is an advantage. Advantage in the sense that we can tune physical properties uh, using different uh, perturbations or external stimuli. The external stimuli that are easily, that are easily coupled to the lattice. So this is, is just, a, it's just a cartoon to show that this unstable ground states can be tuned or can be tuned using different knobs. Uh, so magnetic field pressure and lights and such, these are common things. So what I did recently uh, is, is the electric current. We use electric current to control uh, the, uh, the crystal structures, therefore physical properties. So uh, how many, uh, Andrea, how many minutes I have? I can stop here or I can, uh, I cannot hear you, okay. You could keep going for 10 minutes, I think. Okay, 10 minutes. Okay, then that, that should be enough. So this is, a, this is one of the, we, we studied two, um, we published actually two papers on two different materials. Of course, we did a, a number of materials that are actually, this is this a phenomenon is true. So this is the cartoon. That basically what tells you is that uh, we have a distorted the, uh, structure. But then if you apply fee, uh, current to this distorted structure, then the structure, the distortion, um, distortion is relaxed, uh, are relaxed, and then therefore everything else. Okay, so that's the, that's the essence of this type of uh, study. So let me give you two examples quickly. Okay, so we only have 10 minutes. So um, uh, this, the first one is a strontium 214. And then one of the major feature of this materials is again, as I said, that, that there is a strong coupling between lattice and the moments. So as you can, that this, is, this picture is too busy. But then this is a neutron diffraction data. Uh, it tells you that the, the iridium oxygen octahedra actually rotates about the uh, C-axis by about uh, 13, uh, by about the, uh, 11 or 13, 11 Kelvin at the room temperature. Uh, uh, oops, sorry, um, at, at the four Kelvin. And at the same time, we noticed that the, actually the, uh, the spin is also counting about 13 Kelvin. Uh, the easy axis is the A axis, but then it's the slightly detailed way that reflects this rotation of the, uh, of the octa octahedral rotation. So this is indication, this is a strong indication that the both lattice and the moments are locked. So if you can move lattice, you can move moments and the vice versa. So here, this is, a, this is the, the, uh, some fundamentals, the basics. So magnetization as a function of uh, temperature up to six, uh, 600 Kelvin resistivity. So, um, we, we, so this is, a, this is a, the uh, uh, magnet, magnetization and we call it TC. This is the TC, this is a historic mistake because at the time when we see this T uh, transition, it has a strong hysteresis. The behavior is very much like a ferromagnetic. So at the time we thought this is a ferromagnetic state. So for a long time we call it TC, but actually it should be male temperature, okay? So it happens at the 200, 40 Kelvin. So the other reason that at the time that we call it the T, uh, Curie temperature is because the Curie-wise temperature is always positive, okay? Uh, this again is still something that we, we do not fully understand. And then 
resistivity. So this is resistivity for C and the A axis. So one thing that I want to point out is that there is no anomaly corresponding to this 240 Kelvin. Okay, so here in this area. So this is what I said. There is this very unusual correlation between magnetic state and the insulating states, or lack of correlation between them. And then the energy gap is about 0.4. Okay, uh, so it's not terribly huge, but then robust enough. Um, so the, uh, we started this uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the X-ray, uh, uh, with a structure study. So, uh, you know, this is all tiny. So, but then here, this is our single crystal X-ray. So we put our single crystal, yes. We put our single crystal on tip of this, uh, 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 this sample holder, and then we put two leads to the, to the, to the, uh, to the sample, so two leads so that we can supply current to the sample where we are doing uh, X-ray diffraction. Okay, so this is the setup. Um, <clears throat> so this, the, uh, this is uh, just, just the representative uh, uh, diffraction pattern here. So if we look at one of these peaks, Brock peaks, that's here. So this is uh, the, the peak when there is no current applied. But then when you apply current, this peak, that's the, this peak actually shifts, okay? So this, uh, this over, uh, uh, outline is the original position, but then after you apply current, of the uh, current, this, uh, this moves. Okay, so this is an indication that structure actually uh, yeah, has some response to your electric uh, current. Now this is the density, okay? The density here without current is very high. Uh, so the, uh, this is about 3000 counts, whereas, uh, whereas if you apply current and then the count is, is reduced to 1000. So, so, so all this indicate that there is some responses uh, when you apply uh, current to the, to the crystal. So we did a more thorough study there. Um, this is too you know, detailed and busy. So I just want to point out one thing that, uh, so this, um, this, the vertical axis here is the change of lattice parameters due to current application, okay? And this is the, the horizontal axis of temperature. And then this black curve is just for compar comparison, it is magnetization. So let's look at this red curve. So this red curve representing the change of A axis of, uh, of, this, of the strontium to iridium O4. So if you apply current uh, to this uh, system and then you do temperature scan, you see that the, the A lattice changes about 1%, okay? 1% occurred near this uh, magnetic order transition, which is around 240 Kelvin. So this gives us indication that the lattice, the, ch the lattice change is somewhat related to the magnetic order or magnetic moment. So of course, you know, we, have, we have to rule out a lot, a lot of the things, for instance, the heating and the many other things. So we did a lot of controlled study, but then the, com the, uh, the, the conclusion is that, yes, indeed, the phenomenon that we observed here is intrinsic, okay? So I will skip all the details, but then there is, the paper is published, so if you're interested, you can always find it. So current can drive the, uh, the lattice parameter. And then this lattice, lattice parameter change is associated with magnetic water. And then this is more evidence indicating that. Okay, so I will skip that. Um, and then this is the recent, they published the uh, result, part of the result. Uh, this is neutron diffraction. So without this neutron, this is uh, indicating the bond angle. Actually, the bond angle is actually is a reflection of this distortion. So, uh, Bound angle change actually indicates the, it's actually the change of bound angle actually dictates the physical properties. So this is here without the uh, uh, current, and then this is with current. So you can see that the uh, the current relaxes the uh, the distortions. So the, these are a few highlights of uh, the change of physical properties. So this is a magnetic sensibility as a function of temperature with different current. So you can see that the magnetic order decreases. Uh, as we increase current. And uh, you know, this is a, a isothermal magnetization that also have some changes too. And then the idea here, is to, so the, uh, the, this, is a, this is pretty much a cartoon. Um, so what we uh, propose is that because of the application of, uh, of the current to the lattice, uh, lattice becomes relaxed. So therefore, uh, the, the no temperature decreases, so therefore, isothermal magnetization decreases as well, okay? Because as we see, the one thing that I didn't mention is, uh, is that the, the Sinsky Maria 
uh, interaction actually plays a very important role. So if the distortion becomes weakened, certainly it will affect the magnetic order. Um, <clears throat> so this is an IV uh, uh, curves, and uh, this is kind of an unusual IV curves. Actually, this is the, we start, we observed this in 90s. So this actually is the, the reason that we revisit this, uh, uh, the uh, this uh, this materials with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, applied electric electric current, so um, and so this is the IV curve, and then there are, of course there are lots of the, you know uh, explanation that we presented there, and then one thing that I just want to point out here is that again this IV curve this a uh, this a uh, thresh huh, this a uh, this a uh, threshold v, VTH representing this this actually is associated with the magnetic behavior as well. So as you can see, that around 100 Kelvin there, there is a, a magnetic anomaly. This anomaly appears to be associated with this uh, slope break for, for this, okay? So everything indicating that the lattice, the IV curve and the magnetic order, they're all strongly coupled, okay? Um, of course, uh, applied current induces, induces metallic states and uh, I will not uh, talk about details here. Um, so this is a, a pretty much a, just a, ca uh, a cartoon indicating that the, um, the, uh, when, we ink, when we apply electric current um, to, the, um, uh, to the systems, the structure becomes relaxed. Okay, this is the structure. So therefore it has all kinds of this very unusual IV curves. It has uh, it, it, the magnetic order uh, it weakens and uh, mobility uh, enhance, enhances and such. So this, um, you know, because this is too much details, I want to save that. Okay, so the point here is that apl application of electric current relaxes distortion, therefore changes physical properties. <clears throat> so one other thing that I want to show, that's the last few uh, slides I will show, is the, this, this is the second example. And uh, by the way, this, uh, the, uh, the first study uh, done by, uh, on this compound is by a Japanese group uh, uh, claiming that, uh, that the electric current introduce, induces down magnetic response. But this paper recently, actually after the publication of this paper uh, was actually retracted. Okay, so it is not true. So for this compound, there are two important parameters. One is that the, there, is a vi there is a violent first order transition that happens at the 357 Kelvin, okay? Uh, this again, this transition was discovered in Tallahassee when we, at a time we don't have high temperature uh, facilities. So what we did is that we used the heat gun to heat the sample and then and monitoring the uh, resistivity, uh, resistivity change. And it turned out that the, that me measurement is actually is quite accurate. And then the other transition is, uh, is a, no to, is a uh, antiferromagnetic transition that happens at a much lower temperature. So when crystal structure becomes further distorted, the, uh, it, it stabilizes antiferromagnetic state. So that happens at 110. Okay, so these are the details. So what I wanna, so here, this is the orbital uh, configuration and I, I'm sure many of us know this well. Um, so the, the what separates metallic state and insulating states is actually is the population of the DXY orbitals, all right? And the, and the metallic state, the DXY orbitals is partially occupied, therefore metal. So uh, because of distortion uh, at the low temperature, uh, this D orbit, DXY orbitals is fully occupied, therefore, therefore insulating, okay? So what I wanna show you is that applied current actually retain this type of conf configuration. So therefore the system becomes more metallic. So this is a, the diffraction, extra uh, neutron diffraction that tells you that the, one, this is five, uh, uh, five this is the uh, uh, current density the without current. So you can see this is temperature, this is the lattice parameters. So you can see that the A axis and the B axis, this is the orthorhombic uh, 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 distortion. So this orthorhombic distortion weakens when we apply magnetic field, uh, yeah, when we apply current. And so this is detailed data. So keep this in mind. When, apply, when we apply current, distortion weakens, and then the, uh, and in this structure, the um, A and the B axis are very different. Uh, so that's why they had, it, it has this first order transition, but then apply current can weaken this, uh, the, the difference. This is a detailed structure. So look at this pattern. This, this is a cartoon 
apply carbon, the uh, current reduces the orthorhombicity, and uh, apply current, you know, elongate the C axis, and the apply current, we relax the, uh, the distortion angles. Okay, so that's the, uh, the, that's the point, that's the takeaway points. So this is actually important. This is magnetization. This is a, a axis, the B axis as a, the, uh, uh, as a function of temperature, but with different current density. So you can see this is magnetic water, okay? So at about the 0 0.1, uh, 0.14 uh, amps per centimeter square, the magnetic water disappears, right? Um, and then uh, and at the same time, this is the resistivity is measured at the same time. At the same time, you can see that the resistivity drops by several orders of magnitude. And then as soon as this long range magnetic order disappears, native or native magnetic order disappears, there is emerging the new ordered state. So that's this, okay? Again, I'm gonna skip the, uh, the details, but then I wanna show you that, that this is the current induced ordered state. Uh, we actually do not, uh, not, not sure whether or not this is a, the nature of this order, whether or not this is an orbital order or magnetic order. But then certainly there is this long range order uh, right after the disappearance of the native antiferromagnetic states. Um, so these are the details. So um, the other thing that I want to show you, and then this is my key point uh, here of this talk. So this is the, again, this is the uh, new, this, uh, new, uh, neutron deflection data. This, is a, this represents the orthorhombicity, and this represents the resistivity. So you can see they have same, same color codes. So in other words, there is a, this direct link between orthorhombicity and the resistivity. So when the orthorhombicity is reduced, resistivity reduced. So this again explains that, once again, the important thing is the population, is the orbital population of DXY orbitals. Okay. So this is our phase diagram. And then this is the boundary that, that separates the uh, native antiferromagnetic states and the newly uh, observed uh, orbital states or magnetic states. So that's the phase diagram. All right, so um, uh, I, since I don't have uh, uh, much time, so I will give you, I'll skip the slides. I'll, I'll just uh, say this. The, again, I, I'm repeating myself that many of these exotic states uh, uh, in oxides, in, in, especially uh, in, in transition metal oxides, actually exist mostly in theoretical models. And the, the, the reason that there is no clear cut materials materials realization, I think, again, is because in this type of materials, so this class of materials, there is this uh, extremely, extraordinarily the, uh, the, uh, uh, sensitive uh, or extraordinary sensitivity to, uh, of, of, uh, of ground states to uh, uh, distortion, uh, uh, crystal structure distortion or disorder. That, you know, something that we do not see in 3D uh, transition metal oxides. So, um, so one needs to, so we have this materials challenge. So new uh, synthesis techniques will is needed. So recently we actually developed this, uh, we call it the, the field editing or field uh, altering uh, synthesis, uh, synthesis technology. That actually uh, helps a lot. So in what this is, is that the, at a high temperature, we're actually trying to alter the crystal structures using magnetic field. So this way, the structures may not be as distorted. So therefore, uh, we see something new or something uh, uh, we are theoretically anticipated. So with this, I, uh, I, I want to thank you. Uh, so this is my collaborators uh, related to the work that I reported previously uh, in this talk. Thank you. This was a really great uh, overview over ruthenates and struthenates, uh, struthenates, strontium and ruth ruthenium oxides. So I guess uh, there will be questions. Um, do I see hands? I don't see hands. Why don't I see hands? Somebody sees hands. Um, participants. Oh, there we go. Patrick Fournier, please. Yes. So thanks for the talk. It was a really great talk. Uh, it's a fantastic subject and uh, it's great. So um, 
just uh, uh, during your talk, you were showing uh, uh, basically the uh, pressure is doing roughly the opposite of what the current is doing. So you were expecting pressure to do uh, metallization, drive metallization. It didn't do, it didn't do that really. And, no. uh, and then current is doing it in a sense. Yes. Uh, so, but you didn't show actually magnetic properties with pressure. I suppose you didn't want to, sh to show them, but you know, you showed resistivity as a function of pressure for the uh, resistivity as a function of temperature with pressure. But uh, what about magnetic properties? Are they affected with pressure? Or maybe you showed it and I didn't realize it. Uh, yeah, well, you know, um, I, I, the I same trend? very briefly. Because uh, Andrea only gave me this much time, so I showed that very briefly. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is a, well, you know, uh, when you measure magnetization, uh, uh, the pressure is very limited, uh, yeah. as we all know well. Yeah, of course. So um, uh, we did a you know kilobar. That's nothing nowadays. Yeah. Um, Daniel Haskell at Argon did that. Okay? okay. So let me show his data here. Um, so maybe uh, I missed it. I just... uh, no, I said no, no. I I I I I went through very quickly. Uh, uh, yes. So the, okay, so this is resistivity, right? We yep. can go resistivity. You know, even you know, just measuring this type of things is a huge challenge, but it's doable. Um, magnetization. This is not. This is not magnetization. This is magnetic properties. So this is using magnetic X-ray to do this. Okay. So it is really not a direct measurement of magnetization, but then it tells you that, that this magnetic order here, at um, uh, at a high pressure. In fact, well, this is at ambient pressure. Okay. Uh, you have this peak around 250 or 50 or 40. Um, the early paper that's published in 2012, I think, uh, indicating that the, when pressure is higher than 14 GPA, this, uh, this peak, dis this uh, anomaly disappears. But then re in recent years, uh, Daniel Haskell did more. So he is convinced that uh, there is no long range order anymore. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, okay. Okay, good. Okay. So it's really going the opposite way, uh, even for uh, uh, even for the pressure. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, okay, no, it's not. It's not so that obvious. Of, of course. Okay, thanks. Uh, sure. Yeah, it's not obvious. Um, the the I think the reason uh, this is a very superficial reason, you know, from experimental point of view, uh. that the uh, the resistivity remains what well, the insulating states is, uh, persist up to this high temperature. Yeah. It's, it's because of distortion. You know, the, yeah. uh, we have more detailed data. Actually, it, the pressure actually introduces more distortion. And the distortion is so critical in this type of materials. Even then, is largely, you know, broadened because the unit yeah. cell is reduced, right? So, but then this broadening is actually is not, uh, is not important enough to, to, uh, to, the, uh, to overcome yeah. this uh, distortion. So therefore, the system remains insulated. Yeah. And uh, we said that the, um, uh, in our recent uh, synthesis, uh, you know, new synthesis technique, we're using magnetic field to tune the structures. So the materials, for instance, this type of materials, strontium-2, uranium-04, if we synthesis in the magnetic field, the distortion is, is, uh, is, uh, is much weaker. So the resistivity actually could be, could, uh, uh, well, conductivity could be a several orders of magnitude larger uh, than the, than the non-edited or uh, uh, edited the uh, strontium 214. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Uh, Peter Glüter is next. Yes, hi. I have a question. Have you ever applied an AC magnetic field? Uh, AC current, sorry. Um, no, we we have not. Yeah. Uh, well, um, we we well we did uh, briefly uh, on one of the co compounds, calcium two one four. Um, we, yeah. So there is a no. Um, we, we we well, I would say this. We have no we have no systematic uh, the uh, uh, studies on on on. on uh, um, uh, AC current. So the current that we apply for D, uh, is DC. Um, yeah, that's what I can say because uh, it's been a while. Uh, two years ago we did AC, so uh, I, I don't want any, to say anything that's wrong. Yeah. Kortik, please. 
Yeah, hi. Um, so I had a question about the crystal structure change. Uh, what is the energy scale associated with the kind of crystal structure changes that you see and like how do you estimate it? What is the, what goes into this kind of calculation? Calculation of? Or just, or just the, the crystal structure, the, uh, the, the change in the crystal structure, like the energy scales associated with that, is that, because? Yeah, well, uh, I, I don't know the, the uh, uh, energy scale, but certainly is a large. So you are saying that uh, uh, when we, you are saying that uh, when we apply magnetic field, uh, the, uh, the, the Y structure changes, is that right? Yeah, I mean, so I can think of like, okay, I apply a current, maybe that changes the, how the effective magnetic field is, that reorders the spins. Why does it also have to come with a structural distortion? Well, I, I, uh, I don't, I, let me see. Um, the, um, the bond angle, okay, uh, is, is actually is uh, probably the most crucial thing in, in this type of materials. Mm -hmm. So slight, even slight change, for instance, a fraction of one degree change in bond angle can dramatically change physical properties. Right. Yeah. And also, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're happy with this, that's, uh, that's good enough, but then, these materials, as we said earlier, that they are actually in this, in this sort of a nearly uh, degenerate states because of the, you know, there are so many competition, there are all com so many comparable interactions that are competing for control. So this also is an advantage. So if you, if you apply some, the external uh, uh, stimuli, uh, you, you can actually, you can actually change the uh, physical properties a lot because right. they're frustrated. You know, it's just like a spin glass. But this is not spin glass. It's just like spin glass. If you do anything, it changes, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then we have David Zedeshow, please. Oh uh, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for this this great talk. Um, do you know what happens if you both dope the material and apply a field? The doped materials uh, are, uh, yes, we do have a lot of doped, in, uh, what is last, you said the doped materials in I mean, what? If you both, I mean, if you apply an electric field, if you, I mean, I mean the current, sorry, to doped material. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, magnetic field, you are saying that we applied when we're doing measurements or when? when I mean, uh, applying a current, not a magnetic field. Yes, we, 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 we did. Um, yes. Okay, so that's a good question. The, uh, actually, the, um, uh, the, the compound, the, the calcium compound is actually doped. Uh, of course, the doping, the reason for this uh, is not, we didn't do any doped, we did do uh, the, uh, the measurements with current uh, for doped strontium-214, but the effect is very weak. Okay. The reason is because doping actually reduces the, the distortion, so therefore, current doesn't have a lot of room to All actually right. do structures anymore. Okay. But we did a dope, the, uh, the measurements, we did the current study on doped calcium 214, uh, that's this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, actually the, the data that I'm showing, yeah, so this, we did this, is because the, the first order transition for this a pure compound is so violent. So you, it, there's no way that you can do any systematic study because sample shatters itself. Mm -hmm. So in order to stabilize structure, but without change the, the underlying properties of this material. So we studied, we used this 3% doped manganese, uh, right. calcium 214. Okay, I, I was asking a question because of the science fiction idea here of electric current induced superconductivity. That would be nice. Uh, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That would be really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, there is, a, there is always a you know, technical issue that you have to worry about. Uh, for instance, heating is something that you always have to pay attention to. Right. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I think we have another question from Kartik, I think. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, sorry. Oh, I see uh, Omireza. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. 
So I have a question to the application of pressure on doped strontium iridate, or if there has been any study on the effect of uniaxial pressure on doped material. No, I, I, not that I know. Uh, on uniaxial pressure, uh, no, we haven't done uniaxial pressure. I don't know if anyone did that, because it's a challenge, uh, uniaxial pressure. Uh, you, you apply uh, pressure along one direction, you have to make sure there's no expansion in the other two directions. So uh, that has been a challenge. Uh, I don't know if anyone has done that, but certainly we are unable to do this. And how about the doped material? Uh, has there been any study of hydrostatic pressure on doped strontium Yes, we did. Um, and there uh, is we said, yes, um, the, the, the system becomes more insulating, you know, again. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, because you just don't, you, you, you introduce more distortion. I see, I see. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> Anybody else has questions or otherwise uh, we would I'd like to thank Gong Kao again. This was really a, a, a nice exhibition to the rather complex physics you get in the ruthenates and the iridates. So I, great, I, great, I personally greatly appreciate it. I appreciated it. I hope you did too. So let's thank uh, Gong again. Thank yeah. you. I can, hear, I, I can hear that. So thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, All right. Uh, should if the students would like, maybe you could stay online 15 minutes again. Oh. Sure, I, 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 yes, we do that too. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I all, the, all the professors, please disappear.